What's up guys, Hella Bass here with another video. And today we're gonna take a peek inside this month's Monster Bass box. So I think almost everybody knows that this green box is the Strike King Takeover box. And we're gonna do a slightly different take on the video today. We're not gonna spend much time on the opening. You've seen a lot of these boxes. You've probably already got one. And I'm gonna just do a deep dive in depth and basically how to fish the baits and how to use the baits in my Monster Bass box from Strike King Takeover. So give you all the details. All these are great fish catching baits. This is a great box. These are all proven winning baits from Strike King. And I'm gonna give you the details and the, the necessary info so you can make the mess of catch as many monster bass with these baits. Stay tuned. So this is what came in my monster box. The Strike King Takeover. These are the array of baits that everybody is looking at. A mixture of these. Monster Bass sticker decal. 20% off coupon. Talking about next month's Jason Christie takeover box. And this little ticket, which I understand. If we collect those, eventually you can turn those in for some kind of product or swag or something Monster Bass related. So, got a couple crankbaits. KVD 1.5 and a Strike King Series 4S, which is also another, both of these are square bills, not totally different crankbaits, actually similar brown and orange crop patterns. Uh, we'll talk more about those in a little bit. Probably the best thing in this is the Strike King Thunder Cricket. We'll take a deep dive on this. Uh, Menace Scrubs, I have a whole video on Menace Scrubs, which I will link up in the cards up here uh, and also down in the description below. So we won't spend a lot of time talking about how amazing the Menace Scrub is. You can just go watch my other video on that. Uh, and lastly, some Rage Craws. So if you don't know what the Rage Craws are, they're actually the predecessor to the Guggen's Clack and Craw or Crack and Craw, whatever it's called. Um, and you'll see these are actually what inspired that bait. So these are really the, the OG uh, Craws, the Rage Craws, and these are an awesome bait, and we'll talk a little bit more about these. So here we have the Rage Craw in Bama Bug that we got as part of our box. So you can see this bait is a like a four inch bait, pretty nice bait, moves a lot of water. I also wanted to show you two other Strike King baits. One, this is the Baby Rage Craw and the Rage Chunk. Both of these, all three of these baits are baits that I've used, baits that I keep in my boat, baits that I use a lot. Um, I tend to use these a little more as swim jig trailers and jig trailers uh, and this is more of a bait that I will Texas rig and punch or flip um, it's just got a little more uh, body for uh, getting a hook into it's got a nice recessed hook slot um, that is nice for flipping and using bigger hooks whereas uh, these other baits are just a little more thin uh, and a little more designed for jigs. So you can also bite this down or use this on the back of a football jig or a, a regular jig if you want a big full presentation. Um, but uh, that's the difference in these baits. Just on the so this kind of Bama bug is kind of a green pumpkin June bug mix or red bug. So here are the two crankbaits and two of the popular crankbaits you see in a lot of boxes. Uh, the KBD 1.5 is a staple square bell crankbait. Um, it dives two to three to five feet. Um, great for riprap banks, banging off stumps, wood, uh, sparse grass. Um, this would be a great color for spring, uh, this kind of muddy craw type color. It's actually called brown craw. And here's a 1.5 in sexy shad that's used out of my box that I actually <laughs> end up breaking the lip off, probably bashing it on rocks or something like that. But um, just different little profile color of the bait. Same size bait, 1.5, that came in my box. And then this 4 Series crankbait is still a square bill, and I would say it's closer to a 2.0 size crankbait versus a 1.5. Uh, honestly, used in much of the same applications. Um, orange Belly Craw, great little bait, awesome for the spring, um, worth checking out. Um, just really good square bill crankbaits that can be used in that shallow you know, kind of one to five foot water. You want to usually be banging off stuff uh, and cranking these into objects for best results. So these 1.5s and Series 4 crankbaits, typically I like fishing these on a bait caster like a Dobbins 705 crankbait rod or any kind of moderate medium action rod. Typically fishing these on, again, 10 to 15 pound mono or fluorocarbon so you can crank those shallow rocks and stumps 
usually fish them at a fairly fast pace, trying to get a reaction bait, you know, getting it to bounce off things in the water. And here is the Thunder Cricket in a half ounce that came in the box. And here's one just like it, the same color that I had in my tackle box. Um, rigged with a Zayko a keeper. You can compare it to half ounce jackhammer. You can see the Thunder Cricket has a very unique blade shape, a uh, slightly different head. Um, I would say that the Thunder Cricket has a slightly bigger, more sturdy hook than the jackhammer. And then also another popular bait that I really like to use is the Custom Z-Man, which um, slightly different shaped head as well. All these different blades and head shapes give you slightly different vibration profiles, slightly different sound of the water, which can make all the difference in the world um, to pressured fish. So one may work one day, may work better the next day, or if you're fishing with a buddy or you're fishing behind other boats, um, you might want to change these up and try a different ones. So the Thunder Cricket is a really good option with a, a really good hardware blade connection, uh, hook keeper system that uh, is a great option for bladed jigs. This really shows the three basic types of trailers that I really like to use are swim baits. They're either fork tail or boot tail. Uh, the Menace Scrub is a fantastic trailer um, for bladed jigs. I like to rig them vertically in line with the hook so it looks more like a bluegill or shad tail swimming in the water. And it's a little bit different profile and uh, it helps knife down and keep your bait going deeper in the water. Uh, it allows it to sink a little better and swim lower. Uh, if you want to to ride higher in the water, rig in a claw trailer or a kicking trailer or a rage craw like this hammer craw horizontally helps it plane and ride higher in the water. The Thunder Cricket is a great search bait. You really can fish this from anywhere from a foot of water to five, six feet of water. If you really want to slow roll it, you can fish it even deeper. Uh, but a half ounce bait like this pretty well covers that zero to six foot really well. Like I mentioned before, a menace scrub, a swim bait, a craw, just about anything you want to pair this with, you can mix and match depending on what you want to do. Um, toss it out, reel it in real nice and slow, steady. Every once in a while, twitch it to break that cadence. Um, let it get kind of dove in the grass a little bit and then snap it free. Uh, it's pretty good around other types of cover. Sometimes they're a little bit prone to catch uh, wood with that exposed hook. But overall, you know, you can fish this on braid, heavy mono, heavy floral. Typically, you want a, you know, six and a half to seven foot uh moderate to fairly heavy action rod with kind of a slow bend that you can let them fish load up you know pretty much a similar rod that you would fish a spinnerbait on wouldn't be a bad choice for a bladed jig like this thunder cricket and the great thing about bladed jigs is they have a propensity to get big bites unlike some other baits so uh, it catches fish of all sizes it'll get you a lot of bites in ponds rivers and lakes uh, whether you're fishing from a boat or from the bank and it's also a way to catch a pb for sure I didn't get the Ochos in my box, but I know a lot of people did get the Ochos. Um, just a very good solid stick bait, comparable to a Senko or a Yum Dinger or something like that. The only thing that's different is that it's an eight-sided octagon, which is kind of why it's called the Ochos. They also have a Nedrig Ocho, which you can see. So the Ned Ocho is a, is basically a three inch version that has some extra ribs in it to move a little more water. I definitely will probably try those out. I just don't have any to show you, um, but those are a good looking bait to be rigged on a Ned head. This is a great bait to be rigged on a jig worm. can be rigged uh, wacky style Senkos, uh, weightless hook style. Um, there's a lot of ways to rig these uh, on a, a really uh, light Texas rig. All great ways to catch pressured fish in and around grass. These baits come through grass just about any cover you want. Another popular bait that people are getting in a lot of their boxes is the Strike King Rodent. You can see here it's a beaver style bait with slightly meatier appendages, a little more texture, a um, little more flapping, a little thicker body. Here you can see that bait compared to the Reaction Innovations Sweet Beaver and the Missile Baits D-Bomb. Um, they're all very similar style baits, slightly different appendages, slightly different action in the water. Um, they move a little more water. Um, I would say the, the rodent's softer than the, uh, the beaver. It doesn't have quite as much salt, probably doesn't fall quite as quickly, not quite as dense. Um, all great baits for punching grass, jig trailers, uh, all depending on what kind of fall rate you want, what kind of action of the fish and the different colors that they have. Um, these baits excel uh, 
uh, in and out of grass, flipping wood, brush, other heavy cover. The rodent really can be fished in a wide variety of situations. Uh, probably the most popular ways to do this are um, either on a Texas rig or as a jig trailer. You could Carolina rig them as well. Um, so you can go with kind of a finesse light Texas rig or jig operation where you're using lighter, you know, 10 to 12 pound floor or monofilament. Or this is the thing where you can ramp it up with a big tungsten weight, a flipping hook and 65 pound braid line and punch mats and heavy milfoil and things like that. So the range of applications for a bait like this are truly up to you and up to your imagination. Another popular bait in a lot of boxes that you'll see people opening or a box that you may have got is the red eye shad. This is a fantastic bait made very popular by KVD uh, when he won uh, the classic on Lay Lake. Lipless crankbait, half ounce, um, a staple in everybody's box. You know, compare that to the original Bill Lewis half ounce rattle trap. Um, you can see here. Similar size and shape to the original Bill Lewis. Uh, this has got a little bit different shape. Um, this bait definitely, when it falls, has a better shimmy. This bait is better designed uh, for a yo-yoing action. Um, that's what the main difference in this bait is over the old Bill Lewis rattle trap and what was really designed to do. Uh, it's great uh, covering shallow flats anytime there are fish running bait. Um, best when you can tick the tops of weeds and rip it free out of the grass and get that kind of popping reaction bait. Um, both this kind of yellow craw orange craw are great spring springtime baits uh, as well anytime as you've got dirty water situations so uh, this is a great bait a great search bait anytime you're kind of lost and and can't really find fish a lipless crankbait is a good option it catches bass pike walleye just about anything that eats a bait fish will eat a lipless crankbait um, you know fishing this on anywhere from 10 to 15 pound line uh, typically on a bait caster with a high speed reel is a good bet for a red eye shad the Strike King Game Hog is a bait that I've seen in a few people's boxes uh, in their videos. Um, this is actually probably one of the most underrated baits in Strike King's lineup, in my opinion. Um, it's kind of got the body of an Ocho, these kind of octagonal ribs. Uh, it's like a baby brush hog, <laughs> a Zoom baby brush hog, and an Ocho had a baby, and you end up with the Game Hog. It's got the coffee scent. Uh, the uh, So what I like about this is it's just a touch bigger it moves a little more water than a baby brush hog it's not significantly more but it's a little thicker in the body the flaps are a little bigger um, i really like this either on a light texas rig or as a carolina rig bait it is absolutely deadly on the mississippi river and other places where smallmouth live as a carolina rig the baby brush hog from zoom is a great bait too um, but for some reason this is just a good way to differentiate a little bit when everybody's throwing this you can throw this offer a slightly bigger presentation with a little bit better scent profile and they've got some pretty unique colors that i really like so and the smallies really like that coffee scent it seems like so if you, if you like fishing soft plastics and, and carolina rigs and light texas rigs uh and you want to change it up a bit this striking game hog is an amazing option uh to get more bites and in a slightly different presentation so hopefully you already have that monster bass box in your hands and you're ready to take it out fishing and hopefully i gave you a few pointers this week that will help you catch more bass with those baits and suck less.